Uh, just a little bit of brief background about myself. My name is Simon Green. I am a full-time corporate banking training consultant. Uh, prior to becoming a full-time consultant, I spent some 15 years in corporate banking. Um, roles that involved uh, corporate credit analysis, uh, corporate recoveries, and as a relationship manager. So I do have some practical uh, relevant experience for the topic we're going to be talking about today. What are we going to be covering? Well, module one will deal with our general principles of credit, the, the ground rules and the basics that we need to be clear on um, before we start our detailed analysis. Modules two and three will look at um, some accounting issues that we need to be aware of. Now, this program does not, uh, and certainly has not got the ambition to turn everybody into accountants, and we should certainly not be able to do that in the time allocated here. The purpose of these two modules is to make sure we have a grounding in accounting fundamentals. And what we will do during mod modules two and three is to focus on those counting issues that we as bankers need to me uh, have a bit of uh, emphasis upon. Once we have done the ground rules, we will then in modules four start with our analysis. We're going to start with the business analysis, that environment that the business operates in, before we then in modules five, six, seven and eight start looking at the financial aspects of the business. As I say, we have broken those down into the four modules. Module five will look at the key risks around the business. Module six will look at our ratios, looking, looking at both the calculation and the interpretation of them. Module seven will drill down and focus on cash flow and liquidity analysis. And then we will conclude in module eight by looking at management accounts and projections. So let us start with module one. What are we going to be covering in module one? We're going to start the process by defining what exactly what we mean by credit and credit analysis. Um, we will look at the analysis process, the necessary steps that we need to undertake to come to a logical, rational conclusion about whether to lend uh, to either a corporate or an individual or a partnership and how much to lend. We will then spend some time looking at the first stage of that process which we have identified here as the risk identification stage. We will need to look at our legal entities that we are dealing with and of course we can do nothing until we actually have gathered information. And information in itself has a risk. So let us start by defining what we mean by the word credit. Okay. What we mean by the word credit, and in particular credit analysis, is a consideration of a person or company meeting their obligations at a determined point in time. Now there are three things that we need to concentrate on here in this definition and these are the words that we have highlighted here. The first word is the word likelihood. What we are dealing here is with degrees of risk. There is no such thing as risk-free lending. The moment we make a loan to any entity there is always a risk that we as the lender, as the bank, do not get repaid. So we are dealing with degrees of probability. The second thing that we need to focus on are the obligations of the borrowing entity. And we need to make sure that we have a full handle on the extent of those obligations. Now those obligations may be very well represented on the balance sheet. But we have to remember that the balance sheet is a historical statement. Those obligations may have changed since the balance sheet date. The obligations may also be represented outside the balance sheet in the form of off-balance sheet items or even in separate 
legal entities. Once we've established what those obligations are, timing becomes a critical factor. And so, we need to be clear as to when those obligations are due for repayment. Are they in the short term, the medium term, and the long term? So, what our credit analysis process is about is about risk assessment. Assessing the risk in the borrowing entity and the risk whether the lender, the bank, will be repaid in accordance with the contractual arrangement it has entered into with the borrower. If we look at risk itself then, we can see that risk has three interrelated parts. The first part is the business risk. Then there is the financial risk. And then there is the structural risk. And it is important that we realize at the outset that those risks do not operate in inter isolation. They have an interrelationship. So it is important that not only do we identify the risks themselves, but we are also clear how the risks interrelate with the other risks. So what do we mean by business risk, financial risk, and structural risk? Business risk. Those risks that exist in the firm's external environment and internal environment that have a potential impact upon the firm's future financial performance. The key word here is it is the future financial performance that we need to assess. Secondly, the financial risks. Now the first part of the financial risk is the ability of the firm to manage its operations, to generate revenue, to generate revenue in order to generate a profit to generate earnings and to convert those earnings into cash flow because ultimately what we are repaid from is our cash flow that's represented when we look at the income statement of the company's financials and the cash flow statement which we will look at in a bit more detail later on but which shows how earnings are translated into cash flow. The other part of our financial risks is represented by our balance sheet, which will look at the financial structure of the business and how the business has actually funded itself. And the third part of risk that we need to think about is what's referred to as structural risk. Now, structural risk arises from either as a consequence of the group structure that the firm is involved with, or from the deal structure, the particular lending function that we are associated with. And the consequence of that structure is that the bank, the lender, is prevented from accessing either the cash flows all the assets that it is reliant upon ultimately to repay us. So, just to conclude, three aspects of risk. Business risk, financial risk, and structural risk. Before we look at those in a bit more detail, just a couple of general points that we need to be aware of. To reiterate something that I have already said, our risk factors do not operate in isolation. Once we have identified the risk factors, what we need to ensure is that we look at the relationship between the three of them. The second point to emphasize is that we need to look at both cause and effect. So once we have identified what's caused a risk, what is the potential impact of it? And what we endeavour to do 
is to assess that impact, the effect, and even quantify it to see whether that effect has a high impact, a medium impact, or a relatively low impact. And then we will concentrate on key risks. When we have done our identi risk identification that we will look at in a moment, we will come up with a sub huge number of potential risks. We do not have the time to focus on all of them. So what we do is we focus on those risks that are key, that are key to impacting the potential of the, ability of the company's ability to repay its lending. The fourth point that we need to think about when we are talking about risk is the relationship between the business risk and the financial risk. Now, as a general rule, in the perfect world, the business risk and the financial risk would have an inverse relationship. So if we have high business risk, we would expect and hope the business has a low financial risk. Conversely, if there is high financial risk, we would hope that the business has low business risk. Unfortunately, that's the perfect world and nothing exists in the perfect world. So what we will find between those two extremes is that most companies, most firms operate somewhere in the mid spectrum. And that really is part of our skills as an analyst to establish where in the spectrum the business, the firm, is operating.